So we have a web page that is vulnerable to HTML injection reflected vulnerabilities. The web page specifically is the HTMLI underscore post.php. In this page, we have two fields, first name and a last name. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to test the normal functionality of the application before we start testing or trying to break things. So for the first name, we're going to enter Tony and last name, we're going to enter Stark and then we're going to enter it hit enter. So we see that what the application does is that it'll take the first name, the last name, and it'll display it back into the website. And it's going to proceed it with welcome. So that is the reason that this is a reflected vulnerability because whatever data or input you put into the system, it's reflecting it back on the web page. Okay, so that's why it's reflected. So we know that it is an HTML injection. So the next thing that we want to do then, we want to enter some HTML code or HTML labels. So let's try with H1, and then we're going to hit Tony, and then close out that label. And then for Stark, we're going to do the same thing, H1. Okay, so we're entering the same information. We're entering the first name and the last name. But now what we're doing differently is that we're entering these labels. H1 is a main header label, meaning that it's going to format the text that is w in between the labels, okay? So, and then Stark, we're doing the same label. So let's see what happens. So what we should expect is if we hit go and then we see our text be reflected on the page with the formatting of that label, we know the application is vulnerable. So let's check it out. You see? So we did Tony Stark and it still gets reflected on the page as expected, but with formatting. So what does this mean? The application is vulnerable. So you might be asking yourself, what is the difference between the HTML injection uh, reflected post and the reflected get? Both exercises seem pretty much the same. And you're not, you're not wrong. They are very much the same the way that we um, exploited it or tested for it. But let me show you what the difference is. So to do so, the first thing we're going to do is that we're just going to enter a regular first name, a regular last name. Before we hit go, though, let's enable our Foxy proxy so that the request is intercepted by Burp Suite. We're going to hit intercept on. Okay, now once you have your Foxy Proxy enabled and intercept this on in Burp Suite, we're gonna hit go. So what Burp Suite is doing is that it's capturing the request. So the request has not yet been sent from our computer to the web application. Right now it is in a proxy, which is a step in between. So we've captured that request and we're looking at it in this uh, web or HTML format. So these are the key things that we need to note. Notice that first name, right, and last name, which are the parameters or the data that we entered into the fields of the web application, they're being sent in the web app um, in the body of the HTTP request. So this itself is an HTTP request. Remember that when you go onto the URL, you put HTTP or HTTPS, and then you go to Google or Amazon or whatever website you go to, that is sending something like this, that is sending a, an HTTP request. Now, um, so the data is being sent in the body. This is called the body. How do you know it's the body? Well, because it's separated by a blank space from the headers. These are headers, and it's easy to differentiate because you'll notice that the headers, you know, they are preceded by, well, the header name. Another main difference here is that the request or the type of HTTP request being sent here is a post. So notice how it says post right here at the top. That means that this is a post HTTP request. We'll look at the difference between post and get very shortly. We can just hit intercept off. We can go now to the HTML injection reflected get. All I did was go here, go to reflected get, and we're going to test this. I already filled in my fields, so I put Mr. and Frog. And now, let's make sure that 
Foxy proxy is enabled. Let's make sure that the intercept is on. Okay, once we have those two, we're gonna hit go. All right, so same thing as last time. Our request, our HTTP request got captured by the burp suite proxy. First thing to note, did you notice that there's no body here? Remember the previous one? In the previous one, we had first name, last name, and form submit. Then where's our data? Well, if we go all the way to the top, notice that we have get, bwap, html, the page, and then we have our values, the first name, last name, and form submit. In the post, it was being sent in the body. Here in the get, it is being sent right here at the top of the request. So that is a major, major difference. So basically the difference between the two is that one is a get request and the other one is a post request. Now you may be asking, what's the difference? Well, a get request, a get HTTP request is a request that only retrieves data. So it's only going, it's making a request to pull something from the web application database or a web application file. It says, hey, go get me this resource. Now the post method, however, submits an entity to the specified resource, meaning that it is submitting information that is going to be recorded or is going to be used to change the state of the server or it's going to have side effects on the server, just like it says here. So the get requests pulls information, the post is posting information. That is the main difference. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you come back for more for this uh, BWAP series that we're doing uh, to learn web application hacking for noobs. I'll see you next time.